A remote, reclusive community in northern Minnesota, the Red Lake Reservation has cut itself off even more since the shootings. The anguish of the 5,000 or so Ojibwe Indians who live here has been mostly kept from the public. The media has been denied free access. We were offered one glimpse of a community's distress with the extended Lucier family, mourning both a victim and the perpetrator. I was really flabbergasted. Tom Lucier's brother, Daryl, longtime reservation cop, was victim number one in the rampage of Daryl's grandson, 17-year-old Jeffrey Weiss. And between these two was nothing but a warm, grandfatherly relationship? Yeah, they got along good. He was a good role model for all the kids on the reservation, not just ours, yeah. He had a good rapport with my grandsons, yeah. All day, visitors came in a steady stream to console the stunned family. The whole reservation and our families are going to ask why. And to me, that's going to be the hardest because we're never going to know. We're not making up any excuses or trying to, you know, sugarcoat anything. You know, it's just a very tragic thing that happened and I couldn't have been prevented. Shauna and Tammy Lucier lost their father and nephew in an incident Tammy says they could never have anticipated. He um, never showed us the violent side of him. That's why it's so hard for us to understand this. Um, he never acted out, never got in a fist fight, never got in a fist fight with anybody. They described a kid who liked listening to Johnny Cash and the Beatles, but they also say his father's suicide, his mother's car accident that left her brain damaged amid other turmoil may have accounted for bouts of depression. Once, they caught him cutting himself. And we went to the emergency room with all the right people to try to get him some help. And the doctor there told us that that was a fad. He's seeing a lot of that. And, and sent him home, sent him home. Despite the tribe's isolation, his aunts insist he got the same care he'd have received anywhere in the U.S. We've gone through all of the channels, all, you know, all the right people to see, all the right medications, so we thought. What kinds of medications was he on? Uh, just you happen to know the names Prozac, of the bills for Prozac. depression. Prozac. And he was taking this all the way mm -hmm. until, mm -hmm. until the other day. Yep. Actually, they, they had just recently upped his dosage. They did know he was interested in Nazi material. Reports have said Weiss had posted messages and drawings on websites, including one for the Libertarian National Socialist Green Party. His family simply wrote it off to a bright, eccentric child. He would just make little comments about the Nazis in general. He, had, he, he, knew, he knew a lot about them. You know, I mean, he was very informative. If something came up on TV or, you know, he, he was um, very intellectual. You know, and about Nazi ju history and just yeah, in, in, in general, general in, in general. talking, you know, just um, he he had a way with words, you know. And most of his vocabulary is above college. As families grieve here, Red Lake has seen an outpouring of sympathy and offers of help from outside the reservation from grief counselors to prayer services. This one at the state capitol in St. Paul was attended by leading Indian and state politicians like Governor Tim Pawlenty. Whether you are Native American uh, or of some other uh, ethnic or cultural background, uh, everybody hurts the same. And um, we all hurt the same. And, and you have a, a loss like this, a tragedy like this, it is just painful. It is, it is difficult, it is sad. In other words, this could have happened anywhere, but the fact that it happened here has shown a light on a long isolated Indian reservation. Gambling has brought billions of dollars to some Indian reservations, those near urban centers. But here in the rural north, there's been little benefit. Red Lake remains one of the poorest places in North America. Unemployment here on the reservation hovers around 40%. Lee Cook 
grew up near the shores of the walleye-rich Red Lake. It was sort of our meal ticket, you know, for centuries. Cook now heads the Indian Resource Center at the nearby Bemidji State University. He remembers a real sense of community. Being a kid on the reservation was almost like a romantic thing. It was like a Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer kind of business. We had fun. It was fun being a kid. We, you know, summertime, we were out all day long, you know, shooting birds with us, slingshots and swimming. And, and uh, wintertime, we, you know, we were poor as a church mouse, but, you know, we played basketball outside and, you know, always made up things, you know. He thinks that sense of community and confidence has disappeared and that access to TV and the Internet may have made it harder for kids like Jeffrey Weiss to be comfortable as Indians. We make it hard to be Indian, so, so it's much easier to be a gangster when you got to just dress kind of a funny, weird way and, and have a couple of hand signals, and that kind of puts you on the in crowd. I mean, to be Indian uh, and um, growing up Indian is, a, is one thing, but to, but to have to sort of pick it up by happenstance is not very easy for young people. It's real frustrating for them. Cook thinks that redeveloping a sense of community is the only way this reservation can get past the tragedy. We all got to get our heads together, got to get what's together and figure out what it is we do differently. The first funeral services are expected to be held this weekend.